Hi, and welcome back. It's been a while since I've done anything, um, partly because I've had a bit of a break from the Cortina, I've had a bit of a holiday, um, but now I'm back. I've got no excuses to get on with this exhaust, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, the last time I was on here, I um, had to make some changes to the exhaust manifold because I've changed the inlet manifold. Now, I've spent some time, made the changes, and I've been through and dimensioned everything up. So I've got 23 pages of bits to make um, using all these mandrel bends, which I've labeled up depending on which cylinder and which part of the, the runner it is. So I need to stop waffling and get on with it. The first problem I had was how do you measure and get a repeatable and accurate system of measuring? So what I've come up with because you can see on this bend here that I've got 2.6 mil and uh, 35 mil dead on. I needed something to measure it. So what I've built here is a device that mounts a vernier caliper. I can use the depth side of it. So this is already set to 35 mil. And the clamps just butt up to the depth. And then I can mark it, which you can just about make out there. The blue stuff I've used is... Uh, Oh god, now I'm going to get covered in it. Engineer's blue. Now, it only comes in a small tin, which I'll very carefully show you. That That's a lifetime supply. It goes really far. Now, I've put a bit of thinners with it, just to help it spread. And it looks, actually looks a lot darker on here. Um, don't know why. But yeah, the, the intention here is that I can put these up to where I need them. The vernier mounts into it. And I can, if I need to, this is the, I can actually mark the centre line of the pipe as well. So let's get on with it. So as you can see, number four is done. I uh, got into a bit of a groove with it and then actually realised that I hadn't filmed any of it. But then... This is quite hard to film because it either takes really long or no time at all. Um, so I'm still trying to get my head around it. But let me show you uh, what I've done. So I got it all lined up, tacked this one on first um, because I've got the, the marker, which is similar to what I've done for number one. I've got two and three to do yet, but I'm not working on them yet. And then I was trying to hold all this. And it wasn't too far off. I had the cuts I'd made were slightly longer than what I actually needed. Um, and I think even though I've tried to get the, the bandsaw over there set up, it's just not quite a straight cut. But it seems to have done, seems to have got decent fit. A little bit of adjustment here and there. Um, what I've also found is obviously I need to allow for tolerance in the bend itself. It's, it's going to move slightly, um, so this has been altered, I've tweaked slightly to fit. But now, I've got the adjustable one sorted. So this is the first part of number one, which is a 75 degree bend. So I've got this marked out for how I need it. Um, what I do need to do, where is it? So this is number one. Now I base these lengths off what was on their website. So what they were saying was that you'll get approximately, I think it's like 90 mil extra on the bend. So where the line is here, up to 90 mil. So these two I hadn't, because of what the overall length was to get to that collector, it ended up with a gap here, which I was going to use some of the offcuts from like something from here. Cause I mean, this, this is a crazy amount on this 75. Now you can see this one is slightly longer. So I'm tempted. Yeah. Um, so this is going to be the one on the collector. That's going to be the one that joins these two together. So I'm tempted to get first piece in here, roughly align, do the, the cuts for number, sorry for the, this part here, the 60 degree that comes in and then cut the other 60 where it meets on here 
and just see how much I need to remove if I do up because I'm going to have to remove some, not actually going to have to put any in, which is quite nice because it means I save a weld. So what I've had to do done is like have a piece here. You've got this bit, then you'd have another bit and a joint. So you'd end up having to put in one weld here and one weld there. So if I can do it with with the fewest amount of welds, then it means there's just less error for you know missing anything or whatever. So yeah, I'm going to crack on and actually remember to turn the camera on this time. Whilst I'm measuring and cutting, I just thought I'd say that if you'd like to support the channel, please like and subscribe. And if you're feeling particularly generous, you can always leave, um, leave me a tip via um, send me a coffee or in the description beneath. Anyway, back on with it. So number one's in. I was wrong. I did need to put a piece in here, but you can see this originally was meant to be straight and it's actually kinked round um, by about 15 degrees or so. So I don't know if I've had some movement here with the collector just coming um, away from the engine, but I'm happy. It'll, it's all right. It'll be fine. Um, what I just need to make sure of is when I bring two and three, because two and three are going to come underneath here and around. So what I need to make sure is that I haven't, this doesn't go in the way, but this is why we're tack welding anyway. I think what I'm going to do next is put this inlet flange, inlet manifold back on. In fact, I'll do that one. It's going to stay anyway. I welded it. Uh, it's that side. So I'm going to do this one handed. Uh, it's loosening off a bit. I've had to put the, uh, put the jacket on because it's absolutely freezing in here. Got no form of heating. There's my heater packed on. Anyway, never mind that. Just keep working. So what is good? Looking at it. Alright, I'm just going to put this in that manifold on. I'll be back in a sec. Right, there we go. So that one's on. That one's a bit loose. Needs a bit of adjustment to get those in there. Anyway, first thing that I did find when I printed these is that they ran close together. Well, to the point they were touching. They're not now. So that's a good thing. So I've definitely got some air between that. And I've definitely got plenty between that. With number one and four now being done, I need to focus on two and three. Um, if, but because I know this has moved, as I've just said, before I start cutting steel and making this expensive, I had a, con a thought about this. I'm not doing anything else with this printed one. So I'm going to cut it at this flange here and just see how well this lot slides under here. I can already see, I mean, we've got the flange on there already. I think I'm going to have to remove some material but I can use this as a template to get the rest of it in place. Um, so I'm going to cut these off here at the flange. See how, because I've already got a bit of a straight piece there, so I can always bring that in. If it comes down to it, I might cut, redo number one. I might come back to it because I'm not happy about this kink piece. And if it means that I'm going to have to compromise two and three, which it already looks like I'm going to have to, it's not going to put me in a great position. Um, so let's get this chopped off and we'll go from there. All right, I've had a look at it. This is going to have to be cut down quite a bit for number two. I've not looked at number three yet, but the more I look at it, I'm not happy with number one. So I'm going to go, go back a step. Uh, make a few adjustments. I'll do it off camera because I'm trying not to make this thing long and boring, which is fucking impossible. Um, 
but I'll be back. I'll see what I can do. Right, it's been about two hours. It's taken me a lot longer than I thought. I had a, came up with a really good idea of supporting these. Two Jubilee clips, temp peg cutting off. I've got three of them on here. One at the back, you can't quite see. So it holds it level. Um, and it's enough for me to tack weld it. This is all tack welded. Um, but yeah, really happy now. Didn't actually have to add anything in. I've actually um, I moved a tiny bit from here couple of mil from here and it's it's in it's supported so I can uh, crack on with two and three now so I've just cracked on with it I've got two and three sorted um, two kicks out a little bit wider so I might go back and revisit that just to neaten it up a little bit um, but I have actually gone and thrown this into the engine bay and it does fit so that's a big relief no problems there um, and as a little Christmas present, got myself some ITBs. And how amazing does that look? Um, everything fits. I can't wait to hear it. And I'm just really happy. So I'm really happy with how it's fitting. It's taken me a lot longer than what I thought it would do. Um, I've never done anything like this before, as I've said. Uh, so all I need to do now is work on the rest of it. And hopefully I should have a manifold finish fairly soon. But fingers crossed, eh? Now, if you haven't already, please subscribe, please like, get in touch, because I really appreciate all that good stuff. And I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.